7.2 properties of rational exponents is what we are on right now. So let's take a look. Um, we have the product of power property. And we went over all these properties. This is 6.1, except I'm reviewing these now with exponents is basically all that's happening here. We discussed back in 6.1 what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to uh, multiply them basically. When you have a to the m and a to the n, when you're multiplying the exponents, you're actually just adding them, is really all you're doing. Well, the point I'm getting at is, even though you're just adding them, it's the same if they're fractions, right? If I had 3 to the 1 half times 3 to the 3 halves, you're still adding the exponents. That's still all you're doing. So 1 half and 3 halves, when you add them together, 1 half plus 3 halves, four halves. Four divided by two is two, so really it's three squared, and three squared is nine. So the point is, if they're side by side, just like we talked about before, you're just going to simply add the exponents. Power of a power, same as before. What did you do when you had parentheses and you had a power? Right? What, 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 did, you, what did you do? Well, the point is, uh, I can tell you what you did. You just multiplied them. So if all you did was multiply them, then it's the same here. You're going to take the 3 halves and you're going to take the 2 and you're going to multiply them together. That's all that you're going to do. You're just going to basically multiply the 2 together. So 3 halves times 2 is 3, uh, sorry, 6 over 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So really what we're looking at here is we are looking at uh, 6 over 2, which is uh, 3 and 4 to the third, which is 64. Continuing with our powers, we had the power of product property, and basically we said in this one that you take a to the m and b to the m, and you basically distribute it through to each one, so you get a to the m, b to the m. And once again, same with fractions. If I had a half, I would take 9 to the half and 4 to the half, and 9 to the half is the same as square root of 9, and 4 to the half is the same as the square root of 4. So square root of 9 is 3, square root of 4 is 2, so 3 times 2 is 6. The negative exponent property is also the same. If you have a negative uh, in the numerator, you move it to the denominator. If you have a negative in the denominator, you move it to the numerator. The point is, you basically move it wherever it's not at. So right now, we're saying that I have 25 to the negative 1 half power. Well, not a problem. That just means I need to put that all over 1. So it's 1 over 25 to the 1 half. And 25 to the half is like saying square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So really, what I'm saying is I have 1 fifth. More properties of exponents, I have the quotient of powers property. Basically, when you have a division sign, you are going to take the two um, exponents and just subtract it, so m minus n. So if I have the same base, which I do, 6 and 6, right, same base, I would take 5 halves and 1 half and subtract it. 5 halves minus 1 half is 4 halves, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, so it's 6 over 2, or 6 squared, and 6 squared is 36. Uh, more properties of exponents, I have the power of a quotient property, and what this is saying is if you have a fraction on the inside, you just take the exponent through to both items, so it's a to the m over b to the n. Well, once again, no biggie, right? The same deal with a root or a uh, rational, right? I just take that rational through, so it'll be eight to the third and twenty-seven to the third. Basically, what number three straight times in a row gives you eight? Two times two times two does. The top will be two. What number that's the same three straight times when you multiply them will give you twenty-seven? Well, that's three times three times three. So the point is. The cube root of 8 is 2, and the 27th root, or sorry, uh, the cube root of 27 is 3, so your answer is 2 thirds. So when we're taking a look at this, let's take a look at uh, example 1, shall we? Um, so we have two bases that are the same. So basically, what this means is when they're side by side, I need to add the exponents. No problem, right? We just sit there and we add one half and one fourth. 
but here's the problem you can't add those unless they have the same base so I need to make this the same base first so I need to find a common denominator well I can multiply the top and the bottom of this one by 2 because 2 times 2 will give me 4 so whatever I multiply on the bottom I have to multiply on the top so this is actually 2 fourths plus 1 fourth which is 5 to the 3 fourths I can take this 2 through to both items right I can take the 2 through to both items and square each one so 2 times a half is 2 over 2 and 2 times a third is 2 over 3 so when I take the 2 through like I said I get 8 uh, which is 8 to the 2 over 2 and 5 to the 2 over 3 well 2 over 2 is 1 so that's just 8 to the 1 and I have 5 to the 2 over 3 left over over here it's the same right I just distribute that through to both items right so that means I'll get 2 to the negative 4 over 4 and 3 to the negative 4 over 4 right because 4 times negative 1 over 4 is negative 4 over 4 4 times negative 1 over 4 is negative 4 over 4 negative 4 over 4 is negative 1 so really I have 2 right here I have 2 to the negative 1 and 3 to the negative 1 well 2 to the negative 1 is like me saying 1 over 2 3 to the negative 1 is like me saying 1 over 3 so when I multiply 1 times 1 I get 1 and 2 times 3 I get 6 so I actually get 1 sixth as my answer and let's take a look here um, when we come back we will uh, finish up example one and continue on with the rest of 7.2